Okay. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Like Donald with the sisters, Thora with the brothers. I mean, people just don't want to. What's this? Okay, so is there another common point between the murders? Um. Disaster's personal effects. Murderer is a seducer. That sounds very popular. The day of the murder. Mm. Now, murder is a seducer. Wait a minute. And what was the box of stockings? Box of stockings, a stocking box. Wait a minute. Where's the third one? So Mrs. Asher's stocking box, Betty's box of stockings. Uh, no. Ah, oh, what is it? it? Must be something connected to Carmichael, right? Before you murder the victim or someone close, stockings. It's perfectly yeah. clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. Mm. We have our suspect. This should be of interest, Jop. Now we have to talk to Jap. Okay. Chief Inspector, we are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect? Yes. Contact all the stocking call sellers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Hmm. Excuse the drop frames. Sorry about that. Doncaster. D? Oh, there he is. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Cheltenham. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. You yeah. shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. Hmm. Engagements, huh? A.K.A. somebody else to murder? Can you get the post, Hastings? And why don't you go and get it yourself? <laughs> Très bien. Très bien. What's going on? <laughs> I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Oh boy. Okay, let's see what we got. He dreamt he killed Betty. Feelings for Thora. Gave gifts to his secretary. <laughs> I mean, this is just a family affair all around. Donna with the sisters, Thora with the brothers. I mean, scant talk about scandalous. Okay, here's the post. Poor Mr. Oh, Poirot. goodness. I'm quite sorry for you. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We've a long way to go still. Typery? No, that comes later. Letter T. The next little incident will take place in Doncaster on September 11th. So long. ABC. I should compare Another this letter one. with the one on my desk which I received earlier to see if it does indeed come from the same person. Oi, oi, oi. All right, let's go get the other letters on the desk. What is that? 
Royal Mathematical and Statistical Society's Bulletin, September the 9th, 1935. The alphabet murder, a methodical madman. Ooh. It's highly probable that the alphabet murderer will kill again. We already know. We got the letter. Estimate the number of victims in his next crime? Yes, and it is easy. As soon as we know the ratio of towns, cities, and villages whose names begin with a D, and the ratio of English people whose names are spelled the same. Mm. On the one hand, the ratio of towns, cities, and villages in England with a name starting with D, and on the other hand, the ratio of English people with a name also starting with D. After this initial calculation, it is easy to deduce the likelihood of actually being murdered if you belong to the target population. Yeah. Go to the last page to find our results and details on the calculations. Daily Blag, August 31, 1935. Moustache at half mast. Poirot's repeated failure in ABC case. Jeez. Front Sometimes, page? Sometimes, small things trouble great men. Hastings, faithful collaborator of the Belgian detective, knows something about it. Three mornings in a row, he confided to us, the cook broke the egg yolks when preparing Poirot's breakfast. This apparently casual event has greatly disturbed my friend, to the point it breaks his concentration and slows his judgment. I also noticed his moustache, of which he is so proud, being duller than usual. <laughs> I assure you, I haven't said any such thing to the journalists. They twist everything. Mm, interesting. Mm. Let's go call Jap. Oh no, we have to compare to the letters first. All right. Okay. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yeah, the bolded yes, eye. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes. The I characters yep. in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Mm. Let's see. A is not as bolded. On this one, um, oh, the W's are still, um, see the W, yep, the W's are still kind of faded. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yeah, the W's are still not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Mm, let's see. Um, do 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 do. What about the letter A in his um signature? Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Yeah. One is bolded, the other right. is not. Let us compare this with the other letter. They look different. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Indeed. Yep. Hastings, he strikes tomorrow. Hurry up, we gotta go. He's on another line. 
Can I take a message? Yes, please, mademoiselle. It is from Hercule Poirot. Tell him ABC strikes tomorrow in Doncaster. He must call me back. Very well, sir. She should have rushed and got him right then. Get him off that other call. Now I'm going to see what I can find from these burnt documents. I've received the product I need. Hastings, if you do not mind, I would like you to take a few notes. Yes. Yes. Okay. We need to decipher the burnt documents. Okay. Where's the solution? If someone has tried to get rid of these documents, they may be important. Okay, where's the solution for us to use? Does he have it? So, how are you getting on? I'm ready to take notes. Uh, where's the solution? I didn't see it. Did I miss something? Wait a minute. Let's go over here. Was it put over here? I lock no. my revolver in this drawer. I have not. Okay, where's the solution for the burnt documents? I thought we already... I've finished with this subject. Is it here? Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If someone has tried to get... Okay, but... Hold on a second. Where is the solution? Did I completely miss something here? Where is the solution? Okay, I'm missing something here because I don't... I thought we got the solution in the, uh... What is this? Oh. Poor Mr. Poirot. We don't need to read this again. And get out of here. Wait, unless there was something on the back? I never even checked. No, there's not. Do I need to go to some... Huh. Where's the solution? Oh, is it over here? No? Well, I just got three ego points for something. But for what? It is not the right time to leave. Yeah, but uh, where's the solution at? Oh my gosh. It should not be this complicated. <laughs> How do I get the solution? That's what I'm wondering. I'm missing something here. I am definitely missing something here. Um, he's ready to take notes, but where do I go to put the... Is the solution over there? Why did I get three ego points? Hmm. 
Hmm. So wait. Oh, is that why I got the three? Oh, okay. See, this now, is why. Down to work. I was like, why did I get the three ego points? That made no sense. What are these needs putting in order, a little? Thinking. Okay. Um. See, well, this is a corner. So, what does it want me to do exactly? Do I put that there? No. Oh, okay. What is this? No, I don't put that there. None of these fit. So what am I supposed to do with it? What am I supposed to do with it? Okay, so this moves, this move, this move, this move, this move. This one doesn't. Okay, so do we do it according to that? Ah, okay. This part has to be on the uh, right side. Okay. I think that this is right. Oh, got it, got it. This page will be reconstructed in a flash. Nice. This page is finished. So it's multiple That's pages. Done. Three more to go. Okay, cool. Let's get this solved. All right, which one isn't moving? That one. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a bottom page. This page will be reconstructed in a flash. This is a top page. No? Okay. This goes here. This piece should be placed here. Uh, no. Oh, this one goes at the top up here. No? What? Now the now the game's just being is picky. <laughs> and that's too done. It's easier than I thought. Yeah, just gotta compare it to the stationary part. Okay, that's the stationary part, so let's get that one. This should be, yeah, right there. No? This one has to be a bottom part. Yeah. This one in the this middle. This is child's play. One has to be right there, and then this goes at the top. This page is finished. All right, one more. Only one more. Keep going. This must be the stationary part. Okay, this must be a bottom. It's so simple. It's so simple. Uh, this one must be on the side up. Oh, no, <laughs> that one doesn't want to cooperate. This page is child's play. Okay. Oh, that one at the top. That's why it wasn't behaving. I think that this is right. Yes, indeed. This page all right, is got finished. all four pages. 
All the pages nice. are reconstructed. Now the solution. <laughs> I think Casting said to pour the solution and rub it. I believe that's what he says. Use a bottle of solvent. Um, so we need to pour that on the thing, on the cloth, and then the cloth is now soaked with solvent. All right, I think that's what Hastings says. Take the cloth, soak it, and then got it. Make a note, Hastings. Make a note. Mrs. Mrs. Alisasha Sharpona in Andover. That's our first Thesis victim. Thesis prescribed laudanum. I got it. Look. Aro, where on earth did you find these files? Hmm. On a fire at the bottom of the garden at Comside. All right, but where did the person who burned them find them? Should be in, um... Uh, in, um... Dr. Carmichael's files. That's where he found them. Read the reconstructed documents. Okay. First Alice one. Asher, shopkeeper Our first victim. Trachitis, hemoptysis, chronic cough with loss of blood. Prescribed laudanum based cough medicine. Okay. Betty Barnard. Our second victim. Chronic bronchitis causing dysphonia. Advice to stop smoking. Alexander Bonaparte cast. This is our wounded mustard guard suspect trauma. The killer Pulmonary emphysema. Hemoptysis. Coughing fits with blood. Suffers from absences and amnesia. Hmm. Dick Dudley Dunbar. And this will be our final the victim. Hotel in Doncaster. Asthmatic, yeah. Heart disease, heart condition. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So that will be our final victim. Where did these burnt documents come from? Mm. What's this? There we go. Yep, his records. Yep. The burned documents are medical records and without a doubt they come from Clark's archives. First of all, because all the patients have salt conditions. And secondly, their name starts with either A, B, C or D. And yeah. it is precisely the files that match these letters that have been tampered with. But why burn these files? How come the names of the two victims appear on them? And who are the two other patients? These are very good questions. We already know the answer. One's the killer and one is the uh, fourth victim. That must be Jap. Dick Dunbar. Run, Thoreau. Go, go, go. Or Perot. I called him Thoreau. <laughs> Hello, Poirot. Any news? Yep, it's Jap. You wanted a stocking seller? We have one. Reported by his landlady who thought he was behaving suspiciously. Ah, he there we the go. Most unbelievable name. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Yes, Alexander Bonaparte Cust. How did you guess? Poro, you have magical powers. Not really. A serious lead. I called Doncaster. A person matching Cust's description has been seen at the station. Ooh. He got off the train from London, but after that, nobody knows where he went. Oh, have to wait. The stream is acting up again. Okay, it's back. <laughs> Excuse the drop frames there. Okay, so... Black Swan. Look for him at the Black Swan Hotel. What? How do you know he's there? Trust me, Chief Inspector. You appear to be very sure of yourself. Very well. I'll call the Black Swan straight away. 
The owner is going to get a shock when he learns that there's a murderer under his roof. Get to it, Jap. Do your best, Jap. You can count on me. Okay, got a lead. Hastings, everything is at stake. Sure is. Our main suspect will soon be under lock and key. Probably won't be caught. Another call? So has Cast been arrested? Yes, the Doncaster police are oh, sending him to him. train. That is good news. But why so gloomy, Chief Inspector? Did the other guy died. Well, when I told the hotel owner that he was sheltering a murderer, he collapsed. <laughs> He's dead? <laughs> no, fortunately, but it has taken its toll oh, wow, on. he collapsed. It has to be said that with his name starting with the letter D, he had every reason to fear Cust. Oh. I bet he was going to be the next victim. Dick Dunbar, right? Chief Inspector, I believe that I share responsibility for this incident. What do you mean? I saw Mr. Dunbar's medical records. His heart was weak. I should have warned you. Yep. It's very honest of you to tell me that, Poro. I appreciate your gesture. Please keep me informed of his progress. You can count on me. I'll do what's needed. I will visit him at his bedside when the killer is caught. That's typical of you, Poro. We should focus on the next part of the investigation in order to avoid other incidents. While we're waiting to question Cust, we could search his room in London. We sure that could. The Marbury Guest House. I'll see you there. Yes, but start without me. First of all, I have to sort out a few details for Cust transfer. I understand. A bientôt. Okay. These things we are making good progress. Please go and search the room of our number one suspect. With pleasure. I did have a dentist appointment, but I'll cancel. A dentist. So that is why you are so nervous and bad-tempered. <laughs> a visit to the dentist is never an enjoyable prospect. But an unavoidable one. Go to your appointment, Hastings. I will manage on my own. To Marbury Guest House, please. On we go. Gonna go check out ABC's room, Alexander. Okay, here we are. Inspect the area first, see if anything's clickable. It is a very beautiful piano. Maybe Mrs. Marbury likes to play in her free time. Maybe. Okay, it doesn't look like anything else is clickable. What's over here? It looks uh, like I found the real master of this house. A cat? There is mm. no need to worry about the household cat. I'm sure that Mrs. Marbury lets it do what it pleases. <laughs> of course, as do all cats and cat owners. How do you do? You must be Mr. Hercule Praro. Chief Inspector Jab told me that you might be coming. Um, you may be of valuable help to me. It would be my pleasure to help you. Will there be some journalists there as well? I think you might even be interviewed. You are key witness. She's the one that... I've suspected him for some time. Yeah. But he appeared so harmless. Oh yes, sometimes he got angry and waved his arms about. But even then, he wasn't frightening. And he was as gentle as a lamb again immediately afterwards. It was only this morning that I understood. He told me he was going to Cheltenham, but my daughter saw him at Euston Station. It's not the right station. To get to Cheltenham, you have to take the train from Paddington. And what's more, Mr. Cuss left behind an ABC with Doncaster underlined. There we go. As you can imagine, when I saw that, I called Scotland Yard. Well done. You were right. He did go to Doncaster. So I was right to warn the police. 
Yes, you were. Did you have any other reason to suspect Mr. Cust? Well, he's odd. Sometimes he coughs really loudly and complains that his throat is burning, and sometimes he talks to himself and stares into space. He Medical told me that records. It was because of a wound he got in the war. His head hasn't been quite right since he said. And then he was in Churston when that millionaire got murdered. I found his train ticket when I washed his coat. He didn't want me to wash his shirt. He washed it himself. But I did see big brown stains on it. Got him. Do you think it was blood? Well, when I saw them, I thought, look, he spilled his wine or his soup all over himself. But now that I think about it, well, they did look like blood. Hmm. Got used to travel for his work. Is that correct? Oh, it wasn't for pleasure. He was always on well on trains. But he had to sell his stockings around England. Stockings, door to door, salesman. He used to say. Mm -hmm. Do you know where Kirst was at the time of the murder in Andover and Bexhill? On June the 21st and July the 25th? No, I don't know. That was a while ago, you know. But surely you keep a register. It won't do you much good. Mr. Kirst rents his room for the year. If he goes away for a few days, I have no reason to make a note of it. Mm, that's smart. I remember one thing. Bexhill's by the sea, right? Indeed, it is a large seaside resort. Well, as it happens, at the start of July, Mr. Cast asked me to repair his bathing dress. Suspicious, huh? Hmm. Very interesting. Please continue. I also forgot to say that he started buying newspapers that talked about the case. Documentation of his whereabouts. When did he start buying the newspapers? Let's see. I think it was just after the millionaire's murder in Churston. He didn't seem all that interested before that. Hmm. That will be all for now. I'm going to take a look at his room. Take the key on the counter. So why wouldn't he be interested in the newspaper clippings prior to Dr. Carmichael's murder? I should check the register. Mrs. Marbury may have been hiding something huh. from me. That's very interesting. I don't think my register will help you. Mr. Cust rents his room all year. If he goes away for a few days, I have no reason to make a note of it. Marbury House guest registration. The Date. truth is becoming apparent, and I have something to say to Mrs. Marbury. Wait, I didn't even read what it said. Hold on. I don't think my register will help you. I didn't ask you. June and July. Wait a minute. Rivals departures. I don't see Mr. the cuss. There's a lot of empty. Huh. Okay. There's a lot of empty dates not appearing. Hmm. Hepburn. I don't see cussed on here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go check out his room. Mm. Landlady sublets her room, so I'm gonna have to wash his bloodstain short. Okay. Let's go upstairs. I have something to say to Mrs. Marbury. Oh, yeah. Let's observe her. This woman appears to be in a good mood. Her smile. Mrs. Marbury is in a good mood. She is working very precisely in producing incredibly thin peel. 
<coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's talk to her. Mrs. Marbury, if I am to believe the register, you rented room 306 Mr. Fishman. Mr. Fishman on the day of the Bexil murder? Room 306 is Cuss's room. Can you explain ah, yourself? There we go. Yes, I remember. Just for one night as a favor. Mr. Cust was away. All my other rooms were taken, and poor Mr. Fishman had nowhere to go. Interesting. Mm, should I be understanding or say it's illegal? Mr. Cust was away. Mr. Fisherman took over. So she would double charge with the same room. It doesn't hmm. matter. Provided that you remembered to change the sheets. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> Let's go upstairs now. Room 306. All right, now let's search his room, shall we? The medicine's prescribed to him? Laudanum Cameron's Chemists. Laudanum, a medicine for coughs. Mrs. Asher. Dr. Clark yeah. prescribed for Mrs. Asher. This subject will probably be useful to me. Connections. Sedative. Diethyl barbituric ah, acid. For Johnson the beach. Company. I know this medicine. It is a powerful sedative. This subject will probably be useful to me. Hmm. Alright, so we got that portion of the bedroom. Check the sheets. How hopeful. This place is a real mess. There's a typewriter he used. At least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. Not indeed. Indeed, he is not. Let's check these books. And, ah, what he left behind. ABC guys. Yep. Enough to sign about a dozen murders. He didn't hide it's that closed. very well. ABC guide. Okay, so we got the guides. It's closed. So let's open it. Can we open it's it? It's closed. This is one out of two. Oh, there's a dagger right here. Can go open it. A long blade and knife. A murderer's weapon. Oh, it could be the murderer this weapon. This subject would probably be useful to me. It will. You can open up that other box. Cast is parsimonious. He keeps his pencils and sharpens them until there is nothing left. It is clear that he did not go up in luxury. Mm. Here's a typewriter. I have to get the ribbon. How am I going to do it? Uh, Something is blocking the ribbon. This thing here, right? The ribbon is jammed. I have to start by freeing it. The ribbon is jammed. I have to start by freeing it. Okay. The right hand reel has been removed. Okay, let's go to the left hand. The left hand heel has been removed. Now we can get the ribbon. Something is blocking the ribbon. Oh, what now? Didn't I just... Oh, there we go. And here is the ribbon. Got it. Let us see if it was indeed used to write the letters sent by ABC. Yes. 
I only need the ink ribbon for my inquiry. I will let Jack clean the keyboard if he wishes. All the letters announcing the murders were written on Cust's typewriter. Yep. Got that down, Pat. Good. John Milligan, managing director, Silky Legs, Frederick Street, Leicester. To A.B. Cust, Marbury's Guest House, 1935, May, May the 21st. 21st. Dear sir, further to our letters dated 5th and 10th of the month, we confirm we are you as door-to-door -door salesman, according to the conditions stated in our previous letters. We would send you the articles by mail and also a Redfield typewriter you will be using for every business letter. Regarding the schedule of your rounds, please do as 21st following. Andover, here we go. June 21, Andover. Arrive by train the 20th in the evening and get room at Station Hotel. Start your turn in the north part of the town. This letter there we establishes go. that Cust went to Andover. The ink has hidden the destinations of his other trips. <sighs> I know from Mrs. Marbury that he went to Churston. I just have to show that he went to Bexhill, and I will have proof that he was present at all the crime scenes. So we got a copy of the letter that he went to the first location, killed Mrs. Asher. We have to find the Brexhill portion. Did Cust drop it when he opened the window? Or was it Mrs. Marbury while she was cleaning? It's an ABC. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go searching his room so we can get this box open with the knife we have. This knife is very useful. Who knows? Maybe it never cut anything other than string. Well, if it was a murder stockings. weapon, we tampered with it. So, ah, there's stockings. Door to door salesman. Proof right there. His ABC books, typewriter. We just have to prove that he was in Brexhill. Let's check his closet. Trousers, white shirts. Everything has been washed very well. Ah, Brexhill the paper. Bexhill Daily paper. Dated from the day of the Bexhill mother. Yep. Most probably the basting dress repaired by Mrs. Marbury's expert hands. Yep. That's the proof right there. All the main articles referring to the ABC case are here. From the Churston murder onwards. Nothing, Nothing before, before date. the date. Found Mrs. Asher and Betty articles. That's interesting as well. Is there anything else we have to look at? Is there anything there? Okay. I got three ego points from doing that, so that means I'm missing something. So we need a... What was that? Uh, local newspaper. There we go. The register shows that Cust did not sleep at the guest house on the day of the murder. Where was he? Bexhill. Bexhill. The Bexhill paper reveals it. Cust bought this newspaper in Bexhill on July the 25th. Yep, got it. Okay. Are we done searching his room? ABC guys, enough to sign about a dozen murders. I think we're done in here. Something about the sink. I think we already did all of these. Yeah, we're out of here. 
Is there something on top of his... The least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. Yeah, we already did this part. Hmm. War of 1914, 1918. By the king's order, the name of proof that he was in the war. Devonshire Regiment was published on the London Gazette on May the 10th, 1918, as mentioned in the dispatch for gallant and distinguished service. An army dispatch, wounded on the Somme front, victim of a gas attack, Corporal Cust, greatly his distinction. Is there anything else we have to look at? No? Ah. I knew there was something over here. Blood! This dark stain. Ooh. It could be blood, but goodness knows how long it has been there. Don't know. No use continuing the inspection of this room. I've seen all there is to see. All right. Gotta go talk to Jap next. Let's head on back downstairs. Goodbye, Mrs. Marbury. Thank you for your help. Bye. 